March 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Numbers chapters 15 through 17 of the Old Testament. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and tell them, When you enter the land where you are to live, which I am giving you, and you make an offering by fire to the Lord from the herd or from the flock, whether a burnt offering or a sacrifice for discharging a vow, or as a freewill offering or in your solemn feast, to create a pleasing aroma to the Lord, then the one who presents his offering to the Lord must bring a grain offering of one-tenth of an ephah of finely ground flour mixed with one-fourth of a hin of olive oil. You must also prepare one-fourth of a hin of wine for a drink offering with the burnt offering or the sacrifice for each lamb. Or for a ram, you must prepare as a grain offering two-tenths of an ephah of finely ground flour mixed with one-third of a hin of olive oil. And for a drink offering, you must offer one-third of a hin of wine as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And when you prepare a young bull as a burnt offering or a sacrifice for discharging a vow, or as a peace offering to the Lord, then a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of finely ground flour mixed with half a hin of olive oil must be presented with the young bull. And you must present as the drink offering half a hin of wine with the fire offering as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. This is what is to be done for each ox, or each ram, or each of the male lambs, or the goats. You must do so for each one according to the number that you prepare. Every native-born person must do these things in this way to present an offering made by fire as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If a resident foreigner is living with you or whoever is among you in the future generations and prepares an offering made by fire as a pleasing aroma to the Lord, he must do it the same way you are to do it. One statute must apply to you who belong to the congregation and to the resident foreigner who is living among you as a permanent statute for your future generations. You and the resident foreigner will be alike before the Lord. One law and one custom must apply to you and to the resident foreigner who lives alongside you. The Lord spoke to Moses. Speak to the Israelites and tell them, When you enter the land to which I am bringing you and you eat some of the food of the land, you must offer up a raised offering to the Lord. You must offer up a cake of the first of your finely ground flour as a raised offering. As you offer the raised offering of the threshing floor, so you must offer it up. You must give to the Lord some of the first of your finely ground flour as a raised offering in your future generations. If you sin unintentionally and do not observe all these commandments that the Lord has spoken to Moses, all that the Lord has commanded you by the authority of Moses, from the day that the Lord commanded Moses and continuing through your future generations, then if anything is done unintentionally without the knowledge of the community, the whole community must prepare one young bull for a burnt offering, for a pleasing aroma to the Lord, along with its grain offering and its customary drink offering, and one male goat for a purification offering. And the priest is to make atonement for the whole community of the Israelites, and they will be forgiven. Because it was unintentional and they have brought their offering an offering made by fire to the Lord, and their purification offering before the Lord for their unintentional offense. And the whole community of the Israelites and the resident foreigner who lives among them will be forgiven, since all the people were involved in the unintentional offense. If any person sins unintentionally, then he must bring a yearling female goat for a purification offering. And the priest must make atonement for the person who sins unintentionally, when he sins unintentionally before the Lord, to make atonement for him, and he will be forgiven. You must have one law for the person who sins unintentionally, both for the native born among the Israelites and for the resident foreigner who lives among them. But the person who acts defiantly, whether native born or a resident foreigner, insults the Lord. That person must be cut off from among his people. Because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment, that person must be completely cut off. His iniquity will be on him. 
When the Israelites were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering wood on the Sabbath day. Those who found him gathering wood brought him to Moses and Aaron and to the whole community. They put him in custody because there was no clear instruction about what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, The man must surely be put to death. The whole community must stone him with stones outside the camp. So the whole community took him outside the camp and stoned him to death, just as the Lord commanded Moses. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and tell them to make tassels for themselves on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and put a blue thread on the tassel of the corners. You must have this tassel so that you may look at it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and obey them and so that you do not follow after your own heart and your own eyes that lead you to unfaithfulness. Thus you will remember and obey all my commandments and be holy to your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Now Korah, son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the son of Eliab, and On, son of Peleth, who were Reubenites, took men and rebelled against Moses, along with some of the Israelites. 250 leaders of the community chosen from the assembly, famous men. And they assembled against Moses and Aaron, saying to them, You take too much upon yourselves. Seeing that the whole community is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them, why then do you exalt yourselves above the community of the Lord? When Moses heard it, he fell down with his face to the ground. Then he said to Korah and to all his company, In the morning the Lord will make known who are his and who is holy. He will cause that person to approach him. The person he has chosen he will cause to approach him. Do this, Korah, you and all your company. Take censers, put fire in them, and set incense on them before the Lord tomorrow. And the man whom the Lord chooses will be holy. You take too much upon yourselves, you sons of Levi. Moses said to Korah, Listen now, you sons of Levi. Does it seem too small a thing to you that the God of Israel has separated you from the community of Israel? to bring you near to himself, to perform the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the community to minister to them? He has brought you near and all your brothers, the sons of Levi, with you. Do you now seek the priesthood also? Therefore you and all your company have assembled together against the Lord. And Aaron, what is he that you murmur against him? Then Moses summoned Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, but they said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Now do you want to make yourself a prince over us? Moreover, you have not brought us into a land that flows with milk and honey, nor given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Do you think you can blind these men? We will not come up. Moses was very angry, and he said to the Lord, Have no respect for their offering. I have not taken so much as one donkey from them, nor have I harmed any one of them. Then Moses said to Korah, You and all your company present yourselves before the Lord, you and they and Aaron tomorrow. And each of you take his censer, put incense in it, and then each of you present his censer before the Lord. 250 censers along with you and Aaron, each of you with his censer. So everyone took his censer, put fire in it, and set incense on it, and stood at the entrance of the tent of meeting with Moses and Aaron. When Korah assembled the whole community against them at the entrance of the tent of meeting, then the glory of the Lord appeared to the whole community. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Separate yourselves from among this community, that I may consume them in an instant. Then they threw themselves down with their faces to the ground and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all people, will you be angry with the whole community when only one man sins? So the Lord spoke to Moses, Tell the community, get away from around the homes of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Then Moses got up and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel went after him. 
And he said to the community, Move away from the tents of these wicked men and do not touch anything they have, lest you be destroyed because of all their sins. So they got away from the homes of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stationed themselves in the entrance of their tents with their wives, their children, and their toddlers. Then Moses said, This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own will. If these men die a natural death, or if they share the fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord does something entirely new, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up along with all that they have, and they go down alive to the grave, then you will know that these men have despised the Lord. When he had finished speaking all these words, the ground that was under them split open, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them, along with their households and all Korah's men and all their goods. They and all that they had went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed over them, so they perished from among the community. All the Israelites who were around them fled at their cry, for they said, What if the earth swallows us too? Then a fire went out from the Lord and devoured the 250 men who offered incense. The Lord spoke to Moses, Tell Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest, to pick up the censers out of the flame, for they are holy, and then scatter the coals of fire at a distance. As for the censers of these men who sinned at the cost of their lives, they must be made into hammered sheets for covering the altar, because they presented them before the Lord and sanctified them. They will become a sign to the Israelites. So Eleazar the priest took the bronze censers presented by those who had been burnt up, and they were hammered out as a covering for the altar. It was a memorial for the Israelites that no outsider who is not a descendant of Aaron should approach to burn incense before the Lord, that he might not become like Korah and his company, just as the Lord had spoken by the authority of Moses. But on the next day, the whole community of Israelites murmured against Moses and Aaron, saying, You have killed the Lord's people. When the community assembled against Moses and Aaron, they turned toward the tent of meeting, and the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. Then Moses and Aaron stood before the tent of meeting. The Lord spoke to Moses, Get away from this community so that I can consume them in an instant. But they threw themselves down with their faces to the ground. Then Moses said to Aaron, Take the censer, put burning coals from the altar in it, place incense on it, and go quickly into the assembly and make atonement for them. For wrath has gone out from the Lord, the plague has begun. So Aaron did as Moses commanded and ran into the middle of the assembly, where the plague was just beginning among the people. So he placed incense on the coals and made atonement for the people. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stopped. Now 14,700 people died in the plague, in addition to those who died in the event with Korah. Then Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and the plague was stopped. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the Israelites, and receive from them a staff from each tribe, one from every tribal leader, twelve staffs. You must write each man's name on his staff. You must write Aaron's name on the staff of Levi, for one staff is for the head of every tribe. You must place them in the tent of meeting before the Ark of the Covenant, where I meet with you, and the staff of the man whom I choose will blossom, so I will rid myself of the complaints of the Israelites, which they murmur against you. So Moses spoke to the Israelites, and each of their leaders gave him a staff, one for each leader according to their tribes. Twelve staffs, the staff of Aaron, was among their staffs. Then Moses placed the staffs before the Lord in the tent of the testimony. On the next day, Moses went into the tent of the testimony, and the staff of Aaron for the house of Levi had sprouted and brought forth buds and produced blossoms and yielded almonds. So Moses brought out all the staffs from before the Lord to all the Israelites. They looked at them, and each man took his staff. The Lord said to Moses, 
bring Aaron's staff back before the testimony to be preserved for a sign to the rebels so that you may bring their murmurings to an end before me that they will not die. So Moses did as the Lord commanded him. This is what he did. The Israelites said to Moses, we are bound to die. We perish. We all perish. Anyone who even comes close to the tabernacle of the Lord will die. Are we all to die? God, as I was reading uh, today's verses from Numbers, I was thinking back to, to Pharaoh and how hard his heart was against the signs that you were showing him to let your people go back then. And how many people, how many children had to die because of his hard heart. Even after seeing miracle after miracle after miracle performed by you. He kept attributing it to magic and that his magicians could do the same thing. And I think about these people. Moses said, if, if I'm not appointed by God, then let these people die of natural causes. If God wants, he'll open up the earth right now and swallow them whole. They, their wives, their children, their babies... And right in front of them, this happened, just as Moses said. And yet, a couple sentences later, we see them whining and complaining again. But then the application of your word in my life. Where are those areas, God, where I am being so hard-headed that I don't even see the sins that I'm doing? I think that's why you talk so much about unintentional sins is we have things in our life that we are doing unintentionally because we have covered it up so much with our hard hearts. I do love at the same time hate <laughs> praying the prayer to you that I do so often. God uncover those sins. Search my heart and show me what else I need to change. Because right now I've changed everything that I believe is a sin. But I have no doubt that I'm still doing things that separate me from you. Separate me from your will. Separate me from doing what you expect me to do in this life. And I love praying that prayer because you will answer that prayer every single time. You'll show me exactly what I need to, need to do, need to fix, need to realize is a sin, need to repent of. The reason I also kind of dread a little bit is there's going to be work involved. <laughs> there's going to be pruning involved in, in saying that prayer. But I know the more I'm pruned, the more the things that are alive in me through you grow fruit. And I see things like that in the Daily Video Bible Project. The more that I have completely turned over control of this project to you, God, the more it's just grown and reached the people you want it to reach. And so much fruit is happening in this project. All for your glory. And it just gets me so excited. So today, God, I pray for everyone listening. I pray the prayer of pruning. That you as our master gardener will come in and take care of and show us every single dead limb that is on our body that we're still allow allowing to create decay in our life. We're still allowing those branches of sin. To take energy from what could be produced to glorify you. And instead they're taking energy to give us bigger egos. To deal with um, jealousy. Uh, to create materialism in our life. Lord help us chop those right off. So that the energy that is being taken up by those dead sinful limbs are put to use in the limbs, the goodness that you have created inside of us so that we can grow, so we can produce fruit, so we can glorify you even more. God, I just pray this for everyone, that as you take them through a pruning process, that they will hand that pain over to you and know full well that you'll be there with them because the end result is so good. God, thank you for being so incredibly faithful to us. And for being a most amazing master gardener. 
prune away. In your son's name we pray. Amen.